Hello, everyone, and welcome to the California Department of Tax and Fee Administrations, or CDTFA for short, Spring Virtual Open House. We are really excited about this event. My name is Thomas Tai, and I'll be your host today. So the CDTFA is starting off this year right by adding new team members. As a part of the statewide hiring project, California wants you to join us and be a part of our growing workforce. You'll be hearing a little bit more about that later. We're, we're all happy that you're here and we want you. Fresh new faces means new ideas, new perspectives, and they're all welcome and needed throughout this agency. You'll find that we have a wide range of positions that you'll find interesting, challenging, and that will line up with your interests and ambitions. Working with the state provides a reliable source of income, great benefits, and lots of promotional opportunities. And it's a really great work-life balance here. Throughout this open house, we, we, we know that you'll have questions and we encourage you to send those in to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. We want this, we want this um, meeting or this, this live thing to be as informative and as useful to you as possible. We'll be answering those questions at the end of the live broadcast. We'll also have uh, breakout sessions at the end of the day, so stick around. We'll let you know when to jump into those a little bit later, but for now, it looks like you're in the right spot. First up, we have a video uh, brought to us by our talented media production team, who's also producing this event, What We Do. The California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, CDTFA, administers 37 taxes and fees. We handle sales and use tax and special taxes and fees, which include collections for alcoholic beverages, tobacco, cannabis, fuel, waste, and special environmental programs. We collect approximately $75 billion annually. This revenue supports local essential services throughout California, transportation, public safety and health, libraries, schools, social services, your environment, your community. We're in this together. Welcome back. And to kick things off right, we have a few words from our very own Trista Gonzalez, Chief Deputy Director here at the CDTFA. Hi, Trista. Thanks, Thomas. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the CDTFA's Spring Virtual Open House. We are so pleased to have you all here. Uh, and again, thank you for participating and thank you for our internal team for presenting gathering information and pulling this event together. We hope that it's beneficial for all of you today. As a 20 year employee myself, um, I can assure you all that the information you are going to receive today will be beneficial and that the CDTFA is a great place to work. Um, I not only has it provided me a challenging career, it's been very rewarding and the relationships along the way have been um, amazing too. So I invite you to take advantage today. Listen, you're going to hear a lot about uh, different positions, specifically the tax auditor and business taxes representative positions. Um, as Thomas mentioned earlier, you're going to hear about benefits, promotional opportunities that our department provides, um, and just sort of a general knowledge of what working uh, for CDTFA is like. Please feel free to send in those questions. Uh, if you're thinking about something, somebody else likely is too. So we want to get as many questions answered as we can today. And don't forget, applications are due April 7th. I think uh, without further ado, let's get started um, again. Thank you for coming and I hope you enjoy this live virtual open house. Back to you, Thomas. Thanks for the words, Trista. We'll see you later. So, you know, sometimes people ask me, why did I choose working for the state? Why did I choose CDTFA? My answer is, is growth. So I graduated with an accounting degree. I took an interest in auditing. Uh, tax auditing seemed right up my alley, right? So I applied for a tax auditor position in our Sacramento field office back in 2011, and I've and I've been here since. So uh, tax auditing was just the beginning of my journey here. Because of the opportunities available, I've been able to explore lots of the different areas that CTFA does. I've helped uh, answer taxpayers' questions in our information and advisory unit. I've written audit policy in our tax policy bureau. I've led the training effort 
for the system that we use here now, Cross, and now I'm the manager of our data analysis section. When I started here as the tax auditor, I never would have thought that I'd be here doing things like how our economy is doing in this pandemic. The state and, and this agency really provides opportunities to grow and expand on things that you have interest in. Growth was my path, but there are many different paths here as there are people. So your path will be special. And that's why we should be your first choice when it comes to where you want to work. One of the special people that I met on my path who is going to be presenting next um, we have Alicia, and she has some things to say on what works for her. Alicia, take it away. Ah, thank you, Thomas. Man, I'm so excited to be here today. Um, you are about to witness probably the best kept secret um, in California. Um, the CDTFA is an agency that looks for you know excellent and qualified people. Um, it's one of those places where no two days are the same. Um, there are so many benefits, um, teleworking, uh, we have something called hoteling. Uh, there are just so many things that this agency has to offer. Um, when you think about, you know, the rest of your life, you want to find a place where you can call it home. Um, you're not looking for just a job, you're looking for a career. And so working for this agency, after almost 15 years, I'm still in love with my job. Again, no two days are the same. The people are amazing. Um, I'm excited to come to work every day. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about my path as well, just because, um, you know, I started straight out of college. I was not quite sure what I wanted to do. Um, I applied all over the state. Um, we have 22 different offices, so <laughs> that means that I had a lot of applications that I was applying to. Um, so I was living in Southern California, and the first place that called me back was our Oakland field office. So my parents <laughs> packed up a van um, and drove me up to Oakland, got me an apartment. Um, so I started off as a business taxes representative, and after you know a couple of years in Oakland, then I transferred back to Southern California. Um, in a couple of years there, I became um, our next level, which is a business tax compliance specialist. Um, it's a more journey level position, but you know, still exciting. Um, after I did that for a couple of years, uh, I got to work for our headquarters office in the training department. Um, in that case, I didn't even have to move. So I worked for our headquarters office in Sacramento, but I was still stationed in our Culver City office. A couple months later, um, I got promoted to a supervisor. So now I'm a business tax administrator in our Santa Clarita office. So that just tells you, you know, there are a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of offices that you can go to, um, have, you know, if you need to, you can transfer to different offices, um, room for growth all the time. There's always promotional opportunities. Um, even during this pandemic, since I got promoted twice during the pandemic. So make sure that you stay tuned um, and stay tuned and come back, you know, at the end for our breakout sessions. Uh, where you can talk to a little bit of each of us individually, ask us questions, because um, that's what we're here for. We're really looking for qualified people um, because we're a family here and we all enjoy working with each other. Um, so that's all I have. I'm going to give it back to you, Thomas. Well, thanks, Alicia. That was that was great. We'll see, we'll see you in a little bit. And for the rest of you guys out there, don't forget, if you guys have questions, we have answers. So please send those in to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. And so now let's talk to some more of our, of our team members here. Today, we also have Elise, a Business Taxes Compliance Specialist, or BTCS, in West Covina. And we have Sam, who is a tax auditor in Fresno, to give us a snippet of what it's like at the CDTFA. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Hi, Thomas. Hey, how are you doing? So I have a couple questions for you guys. So I'll start with you, Elise. So can you tell us about what it is like a, a day in the life of a, a compliance specialist here? Absolutely. So a day in the life of a business taxes representative or a compliance specialist would be you're going to be handling a caseload of around 150 accounts of active and closed out businesses of all sizes. And you'll be initiating contact with tax debtors. These could be business owners, CPAs, accountants, power of attorneys, 
And primarily right now, because we are working from home, most of our contact is made through the phone and email. But generally, when we're in the office, you'll be working with them face to face uh, by maybe appointments or walk ins. But we also make field calls as well as business taxes representatives. So we will actually go out to visit these business owners at their place of business. And we're trying to obtain voluntary compliance to have them file maybe past due tax returns or pay past due payments that they owe. And when we can't reach that voluntary compliance from them, it's our job to use the tools and the training that we've been given to uh, obtain those tax returns and payments, even if that means by enforced collections. So a lot of our job is investigating, it's negotiating, you know, working with these taxpayers to get back into compliance. I mean, in a perfect world, everybody would file and pay their taxes timely, but let's be honest, if they did, we wouldn't have a job. So we really want to just, our main focus here is getting them back into compliance. And also as a good BTR, you want to give these customers the resources and tools to not only get out of collections, but stay out of collections and stay in compliance and really educate them on how to do that. Okay. Yeah, you guys do a lot over there. What's the what's the best thing that you like working here? There's a number of things. I mean, this job really does keep you interested. You, like I mentioned earlier, you have about 150 accounts, but no two accounts are the same. Even if you're working with, you know, similar industries, let's say, for example, two restaurants or two gas stations, every account comes with different challenges and i'm sure sam our auditor can agree to that i mean there's always something new to learn with each case that you start working but in addition to that i mean cdtfa really does invest in their employees and i really appreciate that as an employee here we have access to hundreds of linkedin learning videos and training videos uh, as well as ted talks i mean just in the last few months here, we've watched videos on tips on communication and becoming an effective team member and even internal interviewing. So I really appreciate that CDTFA offers all of this to us to be the most well-rounded, not just employees, but individuals as we can be so that we can continue our growth here at CDTFA. That sounds pretty great. So jumping over to the audit side of the house, Sam, can you tell us what it's like to be a tax auditor? Uh, yeah, as a tax auditor, I mean, my typical caseload is between um, eight to 15 audits. So I'm auditing different types of businesses um, and it kind of spans over a different types of industries. It could be grocery stores, liquor stores, uh, supermarkets, auto body. I mean, there's a variety industry of different types of um, businesses that involve sales and use tax. Uh, I mean, and as our jobs as tax auditor, it's not only to um, go through their financials and find any errors that are incorrectly stated. It's also to educate the these taxpayers. Like I said, a lot of um, a lot of the audits that I've come across are new business owners um, running their own business for the first time, and um, they find it very helpful when we're going in there and we're um, stating the tax laws and regulations to help benefit them in reporting correctly. Um, and as a tax auditor, I mean, pre-pandemic, 50% of our time is going out into the field, like I said, visiting businesses, um, going over um, the tax laws and regulations, what they're doing right and what needs to be done. Um, so as far as the day in the life as a tax auditor, it, as Elise said as well too, it's different. I mean, not every taxpayer is the same. Um, so you could look at two different grocery stores or two different liquor stores and have two completely different outcomes. So it's all about um, educating the taxpayer and making sure they're reporting correctly to the state of California. Yeah, you guys as tax auditors do a lot. Uh, <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of training is provided? Um, the training that's provided by the CDTFA, I'd have to say, is bar none, to be honest. Uh, there's five weeks of in-class training. Uh, Pre-pandemic, uh, for me, I was able to travel to uh, Fairfield and fly out to L.A. Um, on the state's expense uh, to where we were uh, training down there. So, uh, But now everything's done virtually uh, through Teams. So hopefully after this pandemic's over, it'll be uh, in-class training. Um, 
in whatever city uh, they're having it in. Um, and you're also given a, a one on one trainer. Uh, I would say it, it typically depends on you. It's usually from three to six months. And I'd say for me as an auditor, I mean, I've been here for four years now and I still um, go back to my old trainer or any of my coworkers and ask them uh, any questions that I may have. I mean, everybody here is very helpful. Uh, the CDTFA really has a, a great uh, open door policy uh, as for my office. I know I could go, uh, and again, this is pre-pandemic, I'd go to my boss's door and ask her questions that I'd have and she'd be very helpful and understanding. And now it's just uh, one team's call away um, and any questions that I have. So everybody's very helpful and the training is um, bar none. That, that's, that sounds pretty great. A lot of, a lot of support, a lot of support. <laughs> Sounds like Absolutely. Um, Elise, so being a BTCS, a compliance specialist, can you tell us what your experience was like with our career advancement here? Yeah, absolutely. So like Alicia, I started straight out of college. I came to CDTFA. I graduated from University of Laverne, a local university here in Southern California, and I graduated with my bachelor's in business administration. I actually found CDTFA at a career fair at my college. And so I started off as a business taxes representative because I had my bachelor's degree, which is already a promotionary position. So that's great. And after passing my probation, I took the exam to become the business taxes compliance specialist. After passing the exam and applying for the position here in my current office at West Covina, I, uh, I got the position as a BTCS or a business taxes compliance specialist. And I'm coming up, I'm just at three years here. So again, very quickly, you know, I've been able to move up um, again with the tools and the training and everything that CDTFA has to offer, I've been able to take those exams and, and complete them successfully. So my opportunities definitely don't end here though. I mean, like you said yourself, you have been to so many different departments and um, I know that the sky is the limit here. I think one of the great things about being here is you don't have to wait your probationary period before you can start taking these exams. I mean, if you have outside experience or if you have um, additional, you know, uh, courses, maybe educational courses that are completed that are required, you can get your foot in the door as a business taxes representative and you can take those exams right away and see if maybe, you know, you can promote right away or even just to get in as a business taxes representative and go to different departments like you did. So I think that's really great. It is pretty great. There's a lot of there's a lot of perks here. A lot of perks working for the BTFA. Um, yes, absolutely. Sam, can you tell us a, a couple of those perks? Absolutely. I mean, uh, working for the CDTFA, I mean, you're working for a government agency and you always hear about people talking about the uh, government benefits in regards to pension and vacation time and sick time. Um, I mean, and also just like Ali said, the upward mo mobility, uh, there's a lot of um, opportunities here at the CDTFA. Um, so uh, a, a perk that I personally like that, I, that I'm on is uh, RDO. And what that is, is I work nine hour days and I get every, uh, I get every other Monday off. So I have a three day weekend every other week. I mean, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, I've worked in the private sector as well, too, where I was uh, a tax accountant for a tax preparer company. And uh, the one thing that you know during tax season, it's hard to take time off because you have to get all those taxes done. With the state, um, you literally have supervisors coming in at five o'clock, turn off the lights, telling you it's time to go home. So you never have to worry about uh, putting in overtime hours or any of that sort. Um, and like I said, the sick time is great that we have with the CDTF as well too. Um, my son was uh, sick uh, last week, so I was able to take time off and use my sick time for that. I mean, I don't know that many uh, different uh, private sector jobs that do that for you. Um, another, uh, another main thing is, I mean, we're in a pandemic as well too, and uh, job security is very important. We're here hiring and we know that your job is safe here with the with the CDTFA. You don't have to worry about the CDTFA going out of business or anything like that. So, <laughs> yep, that's definitely not going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully your son's okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, thanks for the time, guys. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you both later at the the breakout sessions. Thank All you right. so much, Tom. Thank you. So for now, we have we have another video. It goes into some of the details and perks about joining us at the CDTFA. Some of the advantages that you're he that you'll hear include things like you get to pick your own office. Yeah, your your own regional office, a site that's close and convenient for you to get to. Uh, from Reading, we have offices from Reading all the way down to San Diego. Who else does that? Let's roll it. We work smart in tandem, contributing our best to every program. We host executive leadership development programs that focus on communication and accountability. CDTFA offers training, encourages partnerships, and celebrates our diversity. Our Diversity Inclusion Office is committed to attaining a diverse workforce representative of California's labor force and promotes a positive work environment. Being given the opportunity to be a part of a diversity and inclusion celebration subcommittee has allowed for me to share my passion and dedication about finding common connections and learning from one another. It is not only knowing one another's uniqueness, but also taking action with that knowledge. Our team members are actively involved in food drives, supporting veterans, and helping local services. CDCA. Making my life in California today. All right, hello everyone, and we're back. So just as a reminder, this round of our statewide hiring closes pretty soon. The filing filing date is April 7th. We will be hiring a bunch of entry level positions, including our tax auditor and our business taxes representative um, positions. So if you if you miss out on this round, don't be too bummed out, though there will be others. Go ahead and sign up on the calcareers.ca.gov website to get start to get started. On Cal Careers, you'll find positions, uh, position listings for the entire state, including the ones at CDTFA. Um, and another reminder, we still want to hear from you. If you have questions or comments during today for today's event, send them over to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov and we'll get right back to you. Next up, we have our very own Joy gonzalez Kabatic of our returns processing branch in the Sacramento uh, to talk about what she and her team do at headquarters. Joy? Thank you, Thomas. Good morning, everyone, or almost good afternoon. My name is Joy gonzalez Kabatic. I'm an administrator in our business tax and fee division for our return processing branch. And what we do in our return processing branch is we handle the tax returns for our special, most of our special taxes programs and the payments and all the tax return related stuff um, that come along with it. Um, a little bit about me before I jump into my presentation is, is that I have almost 20 years with the state of California. That'll be next year and all in taxes. Um, so it's been quite a journey for me. I start, actually started during my freshman year in college. So it's it's been great. Um, and a few reasons of why I like working for CDTFA is one is that I believe in our mission. Um, I believe that we do a great job of um, fairly and efficiently administering our taxes and fees while putting our, our customers first, our taxpayers first. Like what other presenters have said is that there's plenty of opportunities of growth within our department and lots and lots of support and training to go along with it. And then last but not least, our department understands the importance of work-life balance. Um, and so as a mother of three, that's kind of the top of my list right now, why I enjoy working for CDTFA. So if any of those things sound great to you, definitely consider applying for our position within our department. Um, what we do in our in the business tax and fee division, the positions are primarily at headquarters in Sacramento, although we do have an office in Riverside and also in West Sacramento. What we do is we provide, um, we conduct a wide variety of functions to support both our sales tax and special taxes programs. We register special taxes accounts and that includes alcohol beverage tax account, cigarette and tobacco, cannabis, hazardous waste, and, and many other programs. We process the returns, the tax returns for both sales tax and special taxes. We handle collections, we process refunds and petitions, we conduct audits, we um, coordinate the implementation of legislation, we provide policy, we work with external agencies, and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. 
for what we do in our division. And what's different for us is that we're advertising our vacancies throughout the year um, versus the statewide recruitment efforts that happen twice, twice a year. So if you're looking for opportunities for different types of skill sets, definitely look at the positions that are available within our division and, and you'll find a career path that best suits you. So currently we are recruiting for the business tax representatives positions. We have quite a few. I have one specific in my area and that again is the return processing branch and the final filing date is April 7th. We have one in our compliance branch where we handle the registration of special taxes accounts as well as the collections. And we also have three in our motor carrier office, which is in our West Sacramento office. Um, so our compliance branch and the um, Motor Carrier Office, the final filing date for those vacancies are today. So if those positions sound interesting to you, get those applications in. And last but not least, we have a business tax representative um, in our appeals and data analysis branch, which the final filing date is on March 29th. So thank you everyone for listening in. Enjoy the rest of the presentation and I'm going to hand it over back to Thomas. Thanks, Joy. Um, so I've worked with Joy for, for a while now. I came across her on my on my journey here uh, and she's really, really great to work with. Uh, thanks again. So uh, now now up next with us today, we have two other team members that are going to share their expertise on job finding and the application process. Let's welcome Ariana, a associate tax auditor in Irvine and Isaac, a staff services manager in human resources. Ariana, we'll start with you with the application process. Hi Thomas, yeah, I'm going to talk about the application process for the business tax representatives and tax auditors for the statewide hiring. So in addition to the positions that Joy talked about, we are doing the statewide hiring right now, um, which is unique because the applicants are able to pick which office they want to work in. So when they apply for the tax auditor or the business taxes representative position, they will choose which office uh, they prefer. Um, the process is similar though for all um, CDTFA positions, so the the um, positions that Joy talked about, this can apply to as well. Um, it can be a little intimidating, so I'm going to break it down into a few simple steps and then share a PowerPoint so um, you so our viewers can see um, what I'm talking about. So it's broken down into three simple steps. The first one is creating a Cal Careers account. Um, and then the second step is completing the exams for the positions that they're applying for. And then third is searching for jobs and applying. The first step, creating a Cal, Career, Cal Careers account, um, is done on calcareers.ca.gov. This is our main page. Um, we have a few different functions. You can search for jobs here, you can search for exams, and then you will create your account here. So to create an account, this is all the information you need. It's very basic, so go ahead, get in there ahead of time and, and get your uh, account created so you can get a feel for the website before you apply. Once you've created that account, this is the main account page. So I, there's a, a few um, different functions with the, these tabs on the left hand side. I'm going to focus on these three. The first one is the application template. So this is really cool. You can fill out an application template ahead of time and use that template on every application that you um, apply for. And then you can cater um, that application when you apply for different positions positions. Um, and then the job applications, this is where you're going to search for jobs and the exams. This is where you'll search for exams and take them. So since that is the second step, you'll click that and that takes you to the search for exams here. You'll search for the position um, that you are applying for. So if you're applying for the tax auditor, you'll uh, search for the tax auditor exam and same with the business taxes representative. Um, one thing that's important is that you that you need to take these exams before you apply and you um, you need to pass the exam because if you do not pass the exam, you have to wait a year to take it again. So um, I'll show you how to take that exam. You click you click that exam posting that takes you here to the posting and you will find the bulletin right here. And I want you to read the entire bulletin so you get a feel for what's on the exam. And when you scroll down, 
it will have this preview exam. So you can take a preview exam to get a feel for what is actually on that test. And once you're ready to take it, this is the button that will take you to the um, exam for the tax auditor and then um, for the business taxes representative, it's very similar. So the third step is the searching for jobs and applying. So you're going to go back to that main page um, and on the left hand side you have the job applications and that will bring you to a search which takes you to the advanced uh, search option. It's important that you do use the advanced search so you can specify the department as the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. This website has all departments, uh, all state agencies, so there are multiple tax auditors and multiple business taxes representatives for different agencies. So type in um, California Department of Tax and Fee Administration when you're searching so that the correct position comes up. These are the two statewide hiring positions um, that are posted currently. You can tell that they're statewide because they have the location as, as the United States. You wanna make sure that you're selecting the correct one when you're applying. And you wanna make sure that the department says California Department of Tax and Fee Administration. So next you're gonna click that view job posting. And this is what the job posting looks like. It's really important that you read the entire job posting. There's a lot of important information in this um, posting about the application process and the required documents. I'm gonna point out a few um, important items that I think you need to pay attention to, but I still really encourage you to read the entire thing. So first, the required, um, the application requirements. For the tax auditor and the business tax representative, there are two requirements. So the standard 678 is the basic application that you will fill out within the website. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And then the second requirement is the supplemental questionnaire. This is a survey on SurveyMonkey that asks about your education and job experience. You wanna make sure that you print um, the confirmation page to a PDF and you can attach that to your application. And then lastly, for the tax auditor only, um, the statement of qualifications is a requirement. This is a, a narrative discussion prepared by the applicant describing how the applicant's skills, knowledge, abilities, education, training, and experience qualifies them for the position. It also serves as a documentation of each candidate's ability to, pre to present information clearly and concisely in writing. So a few other items within that job posting that I believe is important is the minimum requirements. Um, this is the, like the education and the job um, requirements to that for, to fi figure out if you're eligible for the position. Um, and then also the duty statement. This will talk about the job duties for each position. And lastly, the desirable qualification, which talks about what the hiring managers are looking for when they're reviewing your applications and, and during your interview. So once you're ready to apply, you're gonna scroll back up and you'll click that apply now, and this takes you to the actual application. The first question um, that they ask you is about your eligibility. So this is if you've taken the exam and passed. So if you've taken the exam and passed, you have eligibility and that it's as simple as that. Last, and then um, it takes you to the, um, this page where you can either use a blank application or you can use that template that we talked about before. <clears throat> and this is what the application looks like. There's five uh, tabs and some things I wanted to point out are the education. You can upload all of your um, education records in here, all the schools that you've been to, your degrees, um, any classes that you've taken that are required for the specific position, you would want to enter in here. And you want to make sure that it saves. If it says no education data provided, that means that it hasn't saved and it won't show up on the application. And then um, the experience tab is very similar. You want to add in all of your jobs here and make sure that all of your um, employment history is saved. And then lastly, the application package. So this is where you will attach your supplemental questionnaire, that SurveyMonkey confirmation page um, PDF that you printed, and then your statement of qualifications for the tax auditor position only. And then the last thing is 
this is your PDF of your application. So this is what the uh, hiring managers see. They actually see the PDF version of the application. So it's important that you review that to make sure all of the important information that you entered in the in the system gets to the PDF. Sometimes you know there's a glitch or you didn't save something and it doesn't get there. And I want everyone to be considered. So make sure that you uh, get everything in that PDF. And lastly, just a couple of reminders, um, apply before April 7th, uh, get in there, get, you know, start applying now. And if you guys have any questions, you can email us at recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. And lastly, don't forget to uh, attach that SurveyMonkey confirmation page. And that is all I have. Um, I just wanted to pass it off to Isaac. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time and patience. Uh, we appreciate you attending this event. A uh, big shout out to all of you for attending it virtually. Uh, this is kind of the new wave of things, so we do appreciate your time. Um, so my name is Isaac Obando. I am one of the program managers and HR managers for the recruitment out and outreach section for CDTFA. Um, today, just like Ariana went over that information, she went over of how to apply, what the required documents are. So we have great opportunities, as mentioned before. Uh, we're hiring for all of our offices in the entire state of California. I'll be going over uh, some of our diversity and inclusion initiatives, as well as other platforms that you can reach out to a recruiter at the specific office location that you're interested in. So I'll begin sharing now. All right, CDTFA. Um, we have our mission and goals is to attract a diverse workforce reflective of the people we serve and the state's relevant labor force. Uh, we provide all employees and job applicants equal access to employment and upward mobility opportunities. And we also have the outreach and recruitment section that we're investing within our own team members to invest within all of you to offer you the opportunities and give you the information that is necessary in order to obtain a career here at CDTFA. Um, by doing so, we're moving diversity forward by creating an upward mobility program to provide new opportunities to our current team members. In 2019, we offered a reimbursement up to 3,000 per year to attend specific uh, accounting courses in order for you to be able to promote once you become a team member. So this is this goes directly into how we invest in our staff and not just we're saying it out to the public, but we're actually initiating and putting things in place to do so. We also develop recruitment pipeline programs to increase diversity and broaden our talent pool. Um, working with our diversity and inclusion office, we've partnered with organizations like the Greater Sacramento Urban League, the Sacramento Employment and Training Agency, as well as the Department of Rehab. Um, we've done, um, we've attended events for um, the Los Angeles Urban League, Asian Resource Incorporation. So we're definitely moving it forward. Uh, by having people who represent the workforce of California as a whole. Some other ways we're moving it forward is by our diversity and inclusion committee. We have uh, special events like this example of Native American Heritage Month, where we had a public speaker come speak to us. This is kind of when we were in person still, but we're still doing it virtually. We also have Hispanic Heritage Month, where we do a potluck of Hispanic uh, dishes and everyone can participate and bring that along in order to expose people that may not have that exposure prior. Um, also to Elisa's point earlier, diversity and inclusion training and resources. So once again, we invest in our employees by on the job training and specific job training. But we also have LinkedIn Learning where we have 112 courses and videos via LinkedIn Learning uh, that discuss fair and equitable openness and respect type of courses, uh, communication courses, interview tips. I think Elise said there's a course on that I'll be taking probably soon. Uh, we also have Confronting Bias, Thriving Across Our Differences, which is a mandatory course as uh, and other courses that are mandatory as well. Um, other courses offered by CDTFA and our training and employee development section is building cultural awareness, cultural diversity, generations, making the unconscious conscious, managing conflict, unconscious bias, like I mentioned before. So those are courses that you can take on your own as within CDTFA, as well as LinkedIn learning courses that we offer outside. And you can take these courses on the job or as well in your leisure time when you have some free time, you can go up, uh, look up specific LinkedIn courses that may not necessarily have to do with your job, 
but maybe something that you want to develop or a tool or skill that you want to uh, create. For all of you in the social media platform, please add our department pages on Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram, and mainly LinkedIn. So I'll go into the LinkedIn component of our, our department page. Uh, so please follow us at linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash CDTFA. There you can also see all of the job opportunities we have available that Ariana had just previously discussed. Uh, you can see those jobs on there and there's different opportunities to look at on there and gain a little bit more information regarding our department um, after obviously today's presentation. Uh, we have a life page there within LinkedIn, so there's quick uh, there's quick videos that we have on what we do, um, and we also have testimonials on there as well, so you can gain a little bit more information and kind of inside scoop of what CDTFA has to offer. Also with there, as I mentioned before, the job section. Here's where you can find every single job that we post within Cal Careers, which is the state website, which legally mandates every single state department to post our jobs there. But... Um, in the investment in staff and to make sure we're getting as much exposure as we can as a department, we advertise all of our positions within uh, LinkedIn as well. So if you haven't followed us, please do so. You'll be able to see the job opportunities there by going to our department page, clicking on the jobs option, and then here you can search by all jobs or specific jobs that interest you, like our business taxes representative, our tax auditor, our tax technicians. Uh, not only do we have positions within the county realm, but we have different plethora of different other positions, analytical positions, IT positions, media positions, uh, legal positions, positions that you, uh, all the positions you can think of, we definitely have available. Um, there's two options when you go on LinkedIn, if you've never applied to a job or sought your interest through LinkedIn, there's an easy apply button, uh, easy and there's an easy apply option. If you select that option, it automatically takes you to this type of screen where you can communicate specifically with the recruiter at CDTFA, which most likely will be me or my counterpart, my great counterparts in our uh, HR department. You'll be able to submit your resume, any required documents that you want to submit to that recruiter. And then what we'll do is we'll contact you, uh, what's called through an in-mail process, where we'll message you the information to your profile, letting you know the exam information for the job, the link to the job and any other details that may be pertinent in order for you to get an interview for that specific job that interests you. Uh, the second option is just the simple apply button. Uh, if it's not an easy apply and it just says apply and you select that option of, of, for a job that interests you, it will automatically take you to Cal Careers, where then you will follow all the steps that Ariana provided, as well as, of course, I'm gonna push the envelope is, uh, please sign up for our, our breakout sessions. We have help, how do I apply? Uh, we have three breakout sessions at the conclusion of this um, uh, live event, so please sign up. It'll be uh, several recruiters, including myself, to be able to answer any specific questions you have if you don't feel comfortable sending it to our recruitment mailbox, but we'll be able to assist you, show you the required documents again, give you the links to the jobs as well, and then just give you uh, answer any questions that you may have thereafter. Also as well, CDTFA, um, just within, I think, what, last semester since COVID, uh, Handshake. Handshake is the biggest thing going. So it offers you the virtual career fairs. Uh, you're able, as a student at one of the larger, at any university that we have partnerships within Handshake with, to schedule a group session or a one-on-one -on -one session with the recruiter in your specific office. So just in the last year, we've attended almost 80, 90 total events within Handshake at all universities throughout the state of California, as well as our other offices within Houston, Chicago, and New York. So we're always attending these events. It's literally almost man, uh, mandated for us to attend these events in order to offer all of you the opportunities that we have available and uh, promote our jobs. Uh, find your purpose with CDTFA. Our goal is definitely to hire the best and brightest talent our commitments to help you, our team members build fulfilling careers, doing work that actually matters and impacts the lives of Californians. And our aim is definitely to be the employer of choice. So we want you to join us at CDTFA. If you have any questions, please email the recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov mailbox. We'll be able to answer any questions that you may have or any concerns or anything like that. So we appreciate your time and big shout outs to all of you for attending this event and creating a career here. Uh, back to you, Thomas. 
All right. So thanks, thanks, guys. Um, I know it's, it can be complicated. The the hiring process and the applications can seem overwhelming at times, but that's why we have people like you know Isaac and and Ariana to to help us out. So now this is our Q and A section. So hot off the presses from the back room, we're getting questions flowing in. All righty, team. I hope uh, you guys are ready for me to call on you. Uh, the first ones are for Isaac. What format of resume do you look for? Is it a one sheet resume or can it be extensive? What about a cover letter? Um, those are that's a great question, Thomas. So um, my recommendation is to always read the entire job bulletin for whatever job you apply for. We hope that you apply for CDTFA, but if not, we're giving you the tools to be successful in applying to any state agency. Uh, so with that being said, Always make sure you're looking at the required document sections of every single job posting. It will tell you exactly what you need to submit. If a resume is not required, you can still submit it, uh, but if it, it's not required, it will not tell you what the parameters are, whether it needs to be one page, 12 point aerial fall or two pages, whatever the case may be. So just food for thought, always follow the directions on the actual job posting itself. For example, on our, is it tax auditor for our statewide promotions that Ariana went over, we're requiring a statement of qualification and it cannot be more than one page. So if you submit more than one page, you are possibly dis automatically, you're possibly disqualifying yourself from the process because you're not following the directions. And some departments are really sticklers to that. Um, but so those are just uh, food for thought for you. Follow the directions exactly how they're outlined on the job posting because we legal, legally as a department, we have to follow those rules and statutes that we have to put on there because everyone's getting the same information at the same time. Gotcha. So different hiring managers will put in different things. Correct. Right. Different things. Gotcha. Exactly. Well, well, thanks, Isaac. Thank you. Next one up. This is for Sam. As a tax auditor, do you have to travel a lot? I mean, this is pre pandemic. So uh, pre-pandemic, it just depends like on your caseload. So for me as a tax auditor, I'd probably go out uh, two, two to three times a week, uh, just going to um, the taxpayers' businesses or bookkeeper. I'm picking up records or I'm having to do an analysis or I'm uh, doing a sit-in at a restaurant. So it, I would say pre-pandemic, it's more than 50% of the time you're not in the office and you're out. Uh, so you're at least going out, uh, yeah, at least a minimum of at least two times a week okay, just to so get records or or do an analysis. So you're, you're driving out to the, the taxpayer's place of business and you're, you're mm -hmm. doing your analysis there? Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. Thanks, Sam. No problem. All right, I think, Isaac, this is for you again. Can an applicant apply for both the tax auditor and the business taxes representative position? And can they apply in multiple locations or for multiple locations? So uh, the answer to the first question is yes, you can apply to any position you meet the qualifications for. So if you meet the qualifications for a business taxes representative and a tax auditor, you can apply to both at the exact same time and go through the competitive and interview process at the same time. Uh, what was the second part of the question again, Thomas? If they could apply to uh, multiple, locations. multiple locations. So um, how we have it structured right now, you can select your office of preferred choice. So if I live in, let's say, the Bay Area and I select Oakland as my preferred office, you'll see that on the Survey Monkey, which is a supplemental questionnaire. And if you go through the process and you're selected for an interview and you're offered a tentative offer, uh, we've given every single candidate we've done in the process their number one office of choice. Now, if you decide to change it later on, that can be discussion between you and the hiring manager themselves. So whatever office you choose, odds are we're going to give you that office uh, to work out of. And of course, right now we're all teleworking, but in case we do go back to the office, uh, that office will be your home office. Yeah, here at the CTFA, we have a lot of uh, flexibility. We have like a lot of variety here, right? We have two dozen offices about. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Isaac. Thank you. All right, next one coming in. This is for Alicia. Hopefully you're ready. 
How many people do you supervise at once? How big are your teams? And how do you interact with, with other groups? Okay, I'll go with the first. So I supervise currently 11 staff members. Um, I think that's kind of about average. And what was the second part of the question? So is it about how, how big are your teams? Yeah, so 11 people. Yeah, okay. 11 people. What, what, what's, your, what's your style of supervision? Oh, my style is we're a team. I kind of feel like a, I feel like a coach. Um, so I try to make sure that I encourage my team members, um, that I support them, that I tell them to go for promotions, and I try to give them the tools that they need to. Um, I try to be the supervisor that I wanted <laughs> before I was a supervisor. So. Yeah, that's that sounds pretty awesome. Thank you. So next one coming in. This is for Ariana. After applying, what is the wait time to hear back from the hiring department? So it takes them a couple of weeks to go over all the applications and um, contact the applicants for the interviews. They're expecting to do interviews uh, between April 22nd and April 30th. So they should hear back before then. So a few weeks. OK, yeah. that's, uh, that's, that's actually not too bad. No. <laughs> all right. And Isaac's pretty popular. We have another question for Isaac. Are there openings for tax technicians? So there are a few openings departmental wise. We actually had a lot of them uh, just recently closed as of last week. There are a few available. So if you're still interested in those, you could send me um, send us an email to the recruitment mailbox or joining or join one of our group sessions and we'll be able to look those up for you and send you those links. Uh, most of our tax techs, uh, we have positions out there in our 22, 23 field offices, but we also have a lot of them in our call center, which is our um, customer service center. So we have a lot of those positions there, and we're always advertising uh, for those positions constantly because people are able to promote once they come in as a tax tech, they're able to promote to a tax tech two, a tax tech three, do the upward mobility program, take the uh, um, required coursework and then be able to promote to a BTR or a tax auditor. So that's why it's always great to get your foot in the door. Um, as you see here, all of the re all of the presenters today got their foot in the door some way, somehow, and have worked their way up to where they want to be. So that's always an opportunity. So if you could join one of our group sessions, we'll definitely give you more information there. All right, so lots of lots of avenues to get into the state. Yes, most it's definitely. Like, thanks, Isaac. All right, next one up for Elise. What are the main challenges of each of the jobs, particularly with the business taxes representative? I mean, for a business taxes representative, maybe some challenges that you might face can be sometimes working with some difficult taxpayers. I mean, put yourself in their shoes. I mean, we're tax collectors and they might not always be the happiest to hear from us. So, um, Again, with a lot of the tools and training that you're given when you get hired, uh, they they kind of teach you on how to approach maybe difficult taxpayers and how to just always stay, you know, cool, calm and collected. I mean, especially during a pandemic right now, um, we want to be sensitive to our customers and what they're going through. So um, I would say just, you know, like I said, keep your calm, cool, collected, and um, <laughs> putting yourself in their shoes and giving them sympathy. Because you're really just trying to help them get back into compliance, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And to be quite honest, surprisingly enough, maybe something that you wouldn't think about being a tax collector is you really do get more thank yous at the end of the day than anything else, even from these taxpayers that um, are maybe upset when you're first coming in contact with them they're really grateful for your help just to get them out of debt and i mean as sam i believe mentioned earlier a lot of these business owners are first-time owners of businesses and they don't um, maybe have the available tools to educate themselves on maybe keeping their books and records accordingly and when to pay their taxes and when to file so they do tend to get a little bit behind um, so, you know, just in, a, a, in addition to getting them out of collections, staying out of collections and staying in compliance is really important. All right. Thank you. 
yeah, we're, we're really here just to help the taxpayer. Right, right. Thank you, Thomas. All right, next up, another uh, human resources question. So Isaac, you're back up. I uh, The question is, I filled out the supplemental questionnaire, but did not save the PDF. Mm -hmm. Can you please let them know what they need to upload? So um, once you click on the link within the job advertisement, we've gotten a lot of those questions. Um, once you click the link to the job, um, the survey monkey uh, complete, you can retake the survey if you didn't save it the first time. So you can retake it by clicking the link on a different browser. So if you, if you utilize Internet Explorer previously, go ahead and use Google Chrome or vice versa, and the actual survey will come back up for you. You'll unfortunately have to retake it. It does take only three to four minutes and then save that version and submit it along with your application or any other required documents based on the job you're applying for. So go ahead and retake it using a different browser and it'll allow you to retake it because if you use the same browser, it'll say you have already taken the survey. So that's the only uh, um, avenue that you can take with that. But if you need help, you can always reach out to the recruitment mailbox or attend one of our open sessions as well. All right, just just try again. <laughs> yes. All right, and it looks like we have time for one more question. One more question. All right, so this is for Ariana. What are the exam codes for the tax auditor and the business taxes re representative positions? Okay, so I have these uh, written down. So for the tax auditor, it's eight P as in Paul, B as in boy, one, two is the exam code and then for the business taxes representative it's seven p as in paul b as in boy four eight all right and they could probably get those again in the breakout sessions probably yes, we'll, we'll have yes we we'll will have be there for your for any questions all right thanks ariana thank you and now that's pretty much all we had for you guys for this live event thank you all for coming thanks special thanks to all the presenters the media team and everyone that participated to make this open house possible. Um, we're going to be rolling over to our breakout sessions. We have some links below. Thanks everyone for coming. I hope you guys will consider starting your journey with us and we'll see you guys in the breakouts.